What's good everybody? Pete here at Spawn Fly Fish. And if you're like me, you want your bugs to be extra buggy. And how do you do that? Well, sometimes just having the right dub makes all the difference. And so for today, we're gonna highlight one of the new tactical micro flash dubs from Fooling Mill. And if you haven't tried this yet, in the next few weeks, we will be highlighting some of our favorite products from Fooling Mill and putting them to use in some of our favorite patterns. So for today, Go get your tools, go get your vise, and let's tie some extra buggy bugs. All right, in the vise today, we've got the A-Rex FW541. This is a size 10. For the bead, we've got a dazzle brass bead from Hairline, size 1 8 of an inch. And this is the metallic pheasant tail brown. And it's going to look really nice when we pair it up with some of the new tactical micro flash dub and this is from fulling mill and this is what we're going to be using for our thorax today and it's going to help this entire fly kind of pop but let's situate that bead with some lead free 0.015 weighted wire and for this I want to use this to kind of mark off where my thorax and abdomen meet if you will and so Roughly 10 wraps should get me there. I'm just gonna clip off both the front and back portion of that wire. And then you'll see I've got a curved scissor here. And this is dedicated for cutting wires and other unruly materials. And then I'll just round that cut edge over. And same with the back side. And then soup it right into the back of the bead. So you can see I came back a little bit far, but that's all right. It'll help build a, a natural taper here as we start getting into this fly. Let's get some thread on there. And today, we're using some uni thread, 6 aught, and this color is camel. And again, I just want this thread to blend in. I don't need it to be a hot spot or to stand out by any means. Just gonna have some really cool natural materials working for the body, mixed with some synthetics. And so it's, it's one of those happy place flies. If you're into that, I like it. All right. So I'm gonna come down here and mark the end of where I want that abdomen to stop and the tail or shuck to start. And one thing I do with these curved nymph hooks is go ahead and once it's in your vise proper, I like to just take my bodkin like this and run it right up underneath the eye of the hook. Now as that goes parallel back, do you see where it meets the shank? I'll do it on your side so you can see a little easier. That looks about right. So that's where I'm gonna end my thread. That's where I want my abdomen to start and my tail to, to end, if you will. And so just kind of turn it on its side, look for that spot. Right about there is, is where I wanna end everything and get my tail tied in. And by tail, this time I'm, I'm using some flash and slinky, and this is brown, but if you notice, there's no flash, it's just slinky. It's because I took the flash out. I don't want a lot of bling coming off the back side of this thing. So just a nice little portion here. And I'm going to tie it behind the weighted wire like so. And then come back down. And I see that one fiber, but we'll mess with that here in a second. There we go. And so if, you, if you've never worked with flash and slinky, it has a kink to the fiber. And that's exactly why I'm using it. So when I get this tied in, I'm going to measure with my scissor roughly a hook length or body length, whatever you want to call that, and then just transfer that to the tail, and that's my cutoff spot. And I can go ahead and come in straight across on this. It's not going to really matter too much. But what I'm looking for is that unruly, kinked kind of tailing shuck coming out of there. And so it'll do double duty as a tail and a shuck. If you want to get in there and taper it, by all means, yeah, that's fine. Have at it. And then make sure that's tied right up to the back side of those weighted wires. And if you do that, it's just going to start building this even underbody for you so that everything we do going forward will either create just the smallest taper or it will stay even. And that's a big deal in the bug world, especially smaller bugs. All right, so... 
just going to continue my thread all the way up until, again, right behind the weighted wire. And let's get our rib tied in for this. And for our rib, we're going to use some ultra wire gold. And this is size small. And again, I'm going to treat this like the flash and slinking come in right behind that weighted wire. And this will be on my side of slightly, so forgive me if you can't see this. I'll turn it here in a second and show you. Oh, and now I'm moving my vise, so let's bring that back in and tighten everything down. There we go. So, turn it toward you, and you can see that wire's on my side of the body. And now we're coming into the fun part, and that is our main body material. And so today, we're going to use some peccary. And I know not everybody has peccary, but if you're a little creative and put in a little effort, I'm sure you could source some. Again, a taxidermist is a great, great source to find some of this uh, different material, if you will. And those tassels at the top allow you to simply split the entire thing all the way down. So not only does it give you two pieces for two flies, but it also thins it out quite a bit. A uh, much nicer wrap when you when you go to form your body and a much more natural bug look. So as you can see, I've got my half of a portion here. I've got a long, long piece and I'm just going to tie in a, a flat or straight section. You see where that bends there at the top. I'm going to leave that out of it, tie in where it's a straighter piece. And then as you see, this material will offer some barring or segmentation in its natural form and that's what we're looking for here. So I'm just going to start that again roughly near those weighted wires. Just tie it down nice and gentle. And I did have this sandwiched between uh, a couple of moist paper towels here for I don't know 10-15 minutes just to make it a little bit more malleable and it'll play just a little nicer for us as we wrap uh, as with quills or peccary or any of that, if you're, if you're wrapping them and they, they keep breaking on you, one, check in where you're tying them in, and two, leave them in that moist paper towel a little longer. Let them, let them get a little saturation in there and then they'll, they'll move much easier for you. All right, so at this point, nothing crazy. You can see we've got our peccary tied in, we've got our rib tied in. So let's go ahead and wrap this body. And what I'm looking for, I, and it's hard to describe this exactly, but I want almost touching wraps because I'm bringing that wire in. So I don't want to leave a true gap like a, a Palmer kind of situation, but I definitely don't want to overlap a single wrap. So if you'll forgive me for a second, I'm going to turn this and make sure I get that, that first wrap as clean as I can. And now if I don't see the gaps here, it's, it's because I'm not going to keep turning it on you. I'm just going to start wrapping. As you can see, there's that wrap right there. You can see some, some color in the middle, and that's what I'm looking for. And again, it's tricky to describe, but a little patience goes a very long way, especially when you're working with peccary or any other quill material. So keep wrapping, keep wrapping. And that is where I'm going to tie off. And so let me securely grab that. And you can see that hair will crimp ever so slightly. And that's exactly what I'm hoping for. Give me a cleaner tie off, more secure tie off. And again, this stuff's not gonna cut because of the thread. You will have to get in there with your scissor and cut it. Pretty strong hair, really in incredible fiber. All right, so now we have that gold wire back here. Make sure we don't trap any of that tail or shuck, whatever you want to call it. And then this is going to follow. This is going to be the first tricky one because we need to get it in the groove right there in between each wrap of our peccary. And I say it a lot, but a little bit of patience goes a very long way. Don't try to rush this. Just take your time. And if I were tying this on my own, I'd be turning the vise every single time and watching that wire seat right in the middle or in between, if you will, each wrap of that peccary. But again, I don't want to throw you guys off too much, so I'm just going to hope that it's sitting in those wraps on your side. 
and I can tell you it looks pretty sharp on my side. All right, again, same spot. We just happen to be slightly ahead of our last peccary wrap. And three wraps to secure. I'm going to get in here with the, again, the designated wire cutter scissor. Much easier to replace a $3 scissor than it is a $23 scissor in my world. I, I'm guessing it's probably the same in yours. All right, tie that little nubbin down from where we cut the wire. And now you can see we have a very, very segmented body. And that gold is just going to act as a little highlighter. It's not going to take away from that natural material at all. And that's exactly what we want. All right, so now for some shenanigans. I've got a feather here prepped for my collar. And this is a 4B hand saddle feather. And the color, you're not going to like it. It's a variant, meaning there might never be another one of these. But here it is. And as you can see, it matches everything I'm trying to accomplish today. As far as a length on these fibers, I want it to go just past the end of the body. And keep in mind, we're about to dub a thorax. So this will sit even slightly more ahead after we wrap it. And that's going to just accomplish everything I want. And yes, I did strip one side. So I'm going to tie this in out over the eye. And then as you see, we'll wrap it toward you. And these little fibers will do their job. So let's pin that right now before we dub that thorax. So all I'm using is that little prep area that I did for a tie-in. And once you've got three, four good wraps on there, go ahead and safely trim out this tag end of your feather. And if it shifts on you at this point, it's probably not tied in strongly enough. So just, again, undo and retie it in. Make sure it's in there snug and proper so it's not going to move, not going to come free on you. You know, let the fish's teeth and... All right, so now that we've got our feather ready, let's get into some of this microflash tactical dub from Fully Mill. I'm just going to slightly prop my feather and get some of this rusty brown goodness dubbed onto my thread. Once this is dubbed on, you'll be able to see what's going to happen. We can make this a very tight thorax, and usually I'm a big fan. And that's kind of what we're going to do, but we're going to leave enough material on here that we can kind of get in and pick out a little bit with our bodkin after we've wrapped this. So again, not only did our thread wraps capture this feather, we're going to cover it two more times by going back with our dub and then forward with our dub. So it's really going to be solidified in there. So be mindful of that feather and just carefully work your way around. And look how much sparkle and life this dubbing's adding already. And at this point, I have a roughly one-third to two-third ratio of thorax to body. And so I'll just simply reverse and come right back. And boom. One more wrap to make sure I don't have any more dub on my thread. Like so. And then here's the move. Feather comes back. I get one wrap in front of the feather so that as I wrap this, I'm not going to be fighting my thread with each feather wrap because it will hit the quill and you you'll just be a little frustrated all right at this point we can gently take this feather and start to wrap by all means coax those fibers around as you go let them spread out and they'll do this on their own a little bit and then this is the second full wrap and as you can see i'm looking for that end of the fibers and so it's going to be right there so any of those excess fibers i've grabbed with my my tying hand here and then it allows me to bring my thread right in that space or V that we created and you can kind of see it there so again right in the V and one more if I've done this proper I can bring this back and it's just so when I cut this it's a little bit cleaner for me I can get my my scissor in that better spot versus that being flat against my bead not quite as clean of a, a cut there all right, so now it's time to get our, our broad cane in and prim and primp a little bit and get those fibers spread out evenly. And again, get in here now and start picking at some of the dub. Get that micro flash to work for you. And a little bit 
um, picked out goes a long way. I'm not going to sit here and brush this stuff because then it'd be too unruly, I think. If I were tying an exact caddis pupa, maybe I'd be a little bit more aggressive. And there we have it. So clean this up and we're ready for a whip finish. Simple, simple bug, but boy is it effective. Anytime you can combine naturals with synthetics, you're usually going to have a pretty effective fly. I know there's a lot out, a lot of people out there that like one versus the other. That's fine. That's your preference. By all means, tie what makes you happy because you're going to fish it better and that means you're going to catch more fish. At least enjoy the time you're out there. All right, two whip finishes. Get that thread out of there. Nice and neat. And now, all we need is a little kiss of head cement. And it's time to go fishing. And I hope you guys are still able to fish. If you're not, by all means, I expect you to be filling multiple boxes of flies. And anything you need, just give us a call, email, look us up on a website, whatever it is. We've got everything you need, and then some. So by all means, just because it's cold and nasty outside doesn't mean you can't still enjoy some aspect of fly fishing, even if that's just tying flies. It's okay. All right. Got that thread neck, if you will, completely covered. And there you have it. A pretty buggy bug. Generic, but still deadly. The peccary nymph. And again, we've got a little bit of that tactical micro flash in rusty brown. And that's a dubbing from Fulling Mill. It's something you should have. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please hit like, please hit subscribe, and we will see you guys on the water.